floor and as like a friend. No, there's oh, other wait. stuff but I have. Alex, yeah. Alex yeah. you weren't you weren't recorded on that during that during that whole um now you're being recorded. That makes things weird, even though I know like <laughs> what what we're doing. It's still having somebody tell you you're being recorded. It's like <laughs> every instinct tells me to be quiet now. Uh all right. Ready? Ready. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Behind the Usher Station. My name is Jonathan. Introduce yourself. Okay, let's, let's start over. <laughs> no, we're going to go with this. We're going to go with this. I'm Jerome. It's me. <laughs> and it's Alex. And we are the Behind the Usher Station crew. What is it with me and words today? I just we have never, to out. be fair, I, I, it is very rare we get the intro right. <laughs> I think we got the intro right like once where it was just solid and it flowed. And especially um, now that we're on Zoom. Yeah. There's me. there's like a lag, but not a lag all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, today is guess what? Our season finale. And we were talking before this show about the fact that this season has gone on for a while, but not a while at the same time like our first episode of season two of this podcast was our review of fantasy island and for some reason for me that seems like it happened two years ago <laughs> it does it feels so long ago but you know that was it was actually on valentine's day of uh, february 14th oh that's we right. an exact day we watched the movie yeah and you know what it to, was you waited outside the cheesecake factory and i froze that's why you remember that <laughs> I remember that because like I looked one I looked so sad people thought I was like being stood up I was like in a like a red plaid dress and I'm like standing there while all these couples were going into the cheese yeah factory. and then I looked like I had just been stood up and all sad and I'm like no nope, also I'm just cold. also I said this then and I'll say it now like no shade to anybody who goes to the cheesecake factory on Valentine's Day but <laughs> why would you go to the cheesecake factory on Valentine's Day cheesecake that's true i mean but... no i get what you're saying but then again it's like if i i have never had a partner to celebrate i get i want to say partner a uh, person to celebrate like valentine's day with i wouldn't want to like go out and like to a restaurant and stuff because isn't it supposed to be like oh lovey happy couple day like, what is intimate about a really packed restaurant, really <laughs> packed bar or club? It's like, how well, is this really sweet? Because, like, some restaurants, you got to get, like, a reservation. So it just it shows, like, how special. It's like, you know what, babe? Like, we always, every date is either, like, Applebee's, Red Lobster, you know. We always do, like, factory. normal stuff. Yeah, Cheesecake Factory. Now, let's do something special. I'm going to take you to this five-star restaurant. You know, you got to get a reservation in advance. It shows that I care enough about you that I put the time in to get this reservation to make it this night really special. You know, so I could see like why you'd want to go out. Me personally, I'd rather just like cook at home and just like, babe, I'm gonna cook you a dinner, and that's what we're gonna do. But that's you know, to each their own. And yeah, I can 100% see the fancy reservation. You know, two weeks, two months in advance thing. But Cheesecake Factory, too many people. They have too many options. Don't get me wrong. I love the Cheesecake Factory. I will go there every single day of my life and eat a different thing. But a bread, though. 10 million that things bread, though? The... I'm if not a fan of for bread, Factory. I would go to Olive Garden. I'm, I'm not a fan say, of Cheesecake Factory about... bread. Oh, I would go I to Red go Lobster for... for the bread. I would go I'm to not... Red Lobster. Exactly. I was about to say, go to Red Lobster. I've yeah. never been to Red Lobster. Oh, you got to have the cheddar. Bit. You well, go okay. to Red Lobster. I haven't been. I haven't been since I was like. No, I heard your tone of voice and I know where you're going with it. I'm going to say, like, I'm going to say, you don't go to Red Lobster for the food. You go for the Cheddar Bay biscuits, and you just so happen to also get food while you're there. But you're really there for the biscuits, because the biscuits are to die. I haven't been there since I was, like, 10 or 11, but I still remember the taste of those biscuits. That's how much they resonate with me. My, my mm -hmm. sister has made those, like, at home from, like, you know, their little boxes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I like the Olive Garden breadsticks more. I think they're oh, good. good there was one time me and um, Jasmine went to Olive Garden together. I think before a movie or whatever. And that girl can put away breadsticks like nobody's business. She can eat so many of them. 
and like at the end of the when we were finishing eating she kind of got embarrassed to ask for a few more and i'm like no just a, a couple more breadsticks Bread she was dying a lot she was dying a little bit but it was she was so happy so breadsticks are good cheddar bay biscuits free the thing that has confused me about restaurants is that they give you bread before the meal so it's like you're filling up on bread and that means you're gonna pay for less food i've never understood that well i think it's no i think it's the idea is that you're going to it, like if they give you bread it's like a, a cheaper way of giving you an appetizer without giving you one like if you don't want to pay for an appetizer that's fine now you have the bread but you're also not going to be sitting like, for example, let's say hypothetically it's a packed day in that restaurant, right? You're probably going to wait a little longer for your food because it's packed. We, like we got a bunch of tables to serve. So instead of you getting frustrated, you know what? I'm waiting too long for my food. I'm going to leave. You got the bread to munch on to kind of hold you over until your, your real food comes out. Like something to kind of just for you to just snack on. Yeah, um, I think that was pretty much what... It's like what you do with chips and salsa. Mm -hmm. Right. You do the same thing like at home. Like when you're hungry, but like dinner's not ready yet, what do you do? You grab a snack out like the pantry or the fridge or whatever to like hold you over until like your food comes. But then bread. Bread is like one of the most filling like bread fills you up. Yeah, you but know, that's probably carry over from you old guys, we're, we're off topic completely. We yeah, need to yes. focus because we you have a time limit. We, so have, we, gotta we get do have a time on, limit. On so <laughs> One of the things we would like to discuss is that... Uh, Sorry, I just want to say, Alex, that might have been one of the first times you've gotten us back on track. <laughs> well, we were really focused on bread, and now I'm kind of hungry. Because uh, I came home from work, and I was like, ooh, bread now. Kinda, <laughs> like, I used to just eat pieces of bread growing up. Like, I would just go and eat, like, a slice of bread, nothing on it. And, like, that, I always enjoyed that. And people were like, why didn't you put... My mom was always like, just put some butter on it or like butter and bread or like pb and j's i'm like no i just i just want the bread i yeah. love bread but uh going i don't know if it's going back or starting, starting. yeah uh, i don't think we've ever started yeah. we've starting to what we were talking about is talking a little bit of some old memories uh as us being ushers and then where we're going in the future for this season finale and like a little did you say surprise at the end or like? Yeah, stay tuned because we have like... a little bit of an announcement um, at the end of this episode. It's exciting. It's a good announcement. It's not a bad one. It's a good announcement. Um, yeah. yeah, but this is Tales. This, so this is basically Tales from the Usher Station 2. Uh, if you watched or watched or listened, I don't think we actually did a video. So listened to our first Tales from the Usher Station. That was our season finale last uh last season uh last year just before you know october um if i if i remember correctly so uh this year once the, like in october <laughs> is our season finale of tales from the usher station 2 um just some last uh some more stories from our days working at the imax theater at the pacific science center it's a place that brought us all together yeah but now it does nothing Yes, uh, unfortunately, because COVID, COVID has taken it's, its toll, it's toll on the Pacific Science Center, and it is also closed, yeah. which is a if shame you, when you think about the fact that the Museum of Pop Culture, which is only a few bases down, is open. So yeah, but that seems to be more informative than yeah. Actually. It's not as hands on as as the science. Center. That's true. It is well, if, COVID. if you if you want to if, if you want to donate to the Pacific Science Center. We'll put the link in our in our YouTube. Got uh, it then. Well, <laughs> yes, I will um, put the link in the YouTube video. Because <laughs> technically, he still works there. I have not in like. No, I don't. I don't technically still work there. I don't think you know. Like mm -hmm. I think very few people. No, no, okay. Work there <laughs> in a technicality. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I I guess I'll start because I actually had a story loaded for this episode. Um. And it's mostly just me and you, Jonathan. This is a story like that you've heard a thousand times because I bring it up every time. But I'm there nervous. was a, uh, there was one night where we decided, like me and you were working together. I, in fact, I think it's when you like you might not remember this, but you and I, uh, early ideas of the podcast, recorded a video in which I ranted about the Emoji Movie. <laughs> one day that will be released to the public, and you will hear my rant. That not that is completely nonsensical because it's not based off of any facts from watching the movie. <laughs> it is just from my anger of the movie existing in general. Okay, first I have thoughts. Yes. So first of all, 
<laughs> I remember it wasn't a it wasn't a video. It was an audio recording. No, it was a video because I have it on my phone. But I put the phone face down to the table, so it's like a black screen. There's no video. So it's that. audio, yes. really. <laughs> More or less, it's, it's audio. audio. And I remember that you showed me that after you told me you had recorded it. So yes. you like secretly <laughs> recorded our conversation. Because we were talking about like, oh man, we need to like record like a conversation like as a proof of concept that we can do this podcast and it'll actually be entertaining. And <laughs> so I recorded it and then I showed it to some of our coworkers and they laughed. And I was like, all right, see, this this will work. This will work if we make a podcast. We got to get Alex in it, and then we're going to make a podcast. Aww. But anyway, um, so we, uh, we were working together that night, and it was late. And uh, for those who don't know, um, who either you don't live in Seattle, you've never been to the Pacific Science Center, across from the Pacific Science Center, because uh, it's in Seattle Center, which is like a park, across the park, like going straight across is the armory, which is this uh, more or less like food court type area where there's tons of different restaurants and stuff. Uh, and in it is, uh, you know, my pizza, Quincy's burgers and fries, um, Sasquatch subway, uh, stuff like that. And it also in there is skillet, which is a restaurant that serves uh, burgers and stuff, but it's more like high end. Like they, they serve stuff that is a lot more um, unique. Like they don't have just like, you can't just go there and get like a regular burger and fries. Like they're going to have a burger with like a specific type of topping on it or something like that. And so me and Jonathan went over to Skillet to get food. Why we chose Skillet, I can't entirely remember. I think it was the only place that was open at I that time. I think that's what it was, is that it was the only place that was open. And uh, but normally my pizza is the last place to close, but I digress. Anyway, we went to Skillet and we got... Um, Jonathan got a grilled cheese. I got a burger. Now, the thing about this burger was is that I already, like I said, the place serves specific toppings. On the list of specific toppings for that burger, one of them was bacon jam. Now, when you hear the word bacon jam, you immediately think to yourself, it must taste like bacon. Wrong. You'd be dead wrong. It don't taste like bacon realistically at all. It tastes, if anything, it tastes like old bacon that's been smushed together and is like been sitting out for a minute. Because after I got this, mind you, after I got this burger, we got, took it all the way to the Pacific Science Center. My mouth was ready. You ever had your mouth ready for a food and then it just disappointed? Where is this story going? <laughs> I don't even going, know. Yeah. The story is going like It started this. with the emoji movie. For, uh, maybe you know, maybe, maybe the, like, like speed it up. Like, I'm we, very angry. <laughs> maybe the bacon jam was like bacon grease. Regardless, and, like, all I know is I paid $15 for that burger, $15, and I was disappointed, and I am still mad at Skillet about that to this day, all right? I and paid... Jonathan remembers this because every time we go into the armory together, I bring this story up because <laughs> he remembers me throwing away that burger so mad, and I was still hungry. I paid fifteen dollars for that grilled cheese, but it was it was it was pretty good. It was probably worth fifteen dollars because it was it was like we, it was like mac and cheese cheese. It was like ooh. it yeah, it tasted like it tasted like it had mac and cheese in it, but it it, it wasn't. It was just the cheese, but it, it was good. It was. It was good. I always think back on how much what we used to eat at the science center because sometimes we would try we would all try to be healthy and like bring our food from home. Yeah, and I know like, what are you eating? Yeah, Jasmine, Jasmine had better self control than all of us there. I um, usually, if I worked late, I usually brought mine. Mm-hmm. I usually like brought my food from from. Good home. chunk of the time for a while, you kept bringing me Popeyes. That's true. That's that was like true. a thing. Um, what was it? That was when you you notified me that I tend to sing when I talk. I was not aware of that. I do sing sometimes when I t- instead of talking. And you mentioned that to me when I was like, oh, yeah, I got broccoli and beef. And you're like, you know, you're singing that, right? <laughs> like every time I'm they're like, what do you have for dinner? You remember broccoli the song? Beef. Yeah. It was just like, broccoli. like, I always just sing what I'm eating. And then I was like, oh, I do hear it. And I now do it throughout my life. But I think about all the like bad food sometimes because sometimes we would be like, we don't have anything. And we would go up to like the cafe. It would close and they would have that all the like food that was like left over be like does anybody want like a really dried out hamburger or a kind of hard corn dog 
She's like the food was awful. Yeah, yeah I'll never except, forget. Except that. they did do they did do a rehaul in the last like year or so or whatever of rehaul the or the- recall. Rehaul, rehaul. I believe if they did a recall, I would, no. I would understand that all that food was not. They, they like, safe. they like, all they they like got pizza. new. Well, they they no they they like got new management and they got new um, like they renovated the that entire like space and everything and the food was not bad because they would have oh, alternating dude. options. They had a panini. Like it wouldn't be the same. Yeah, it wouldn't be the same every single day, um, which was nice. I'll never forget, though, the one time uh, we used to do, uh, people listening, we used to do these 72-hour Star Wars marathons uh, for when the new Star Wars movies came out, Um, which basically just meant, like, the movie was on in rotation for 72 hours. So if you came at, like, you could, like, shows were at, like, 4 in the morning. Stuff and like they that. were all sold out because it was opening weekend too. Mm-hmm. So you'd have a bunch of people at like four in the morning. And every I remember doing speeches for that and literally having to tell everybody like, look, you're passing the line that's coming in. And I know you guys are all excited, but wait until you're straight out of the building to start talking about the film. I'm yeah, like, don't spoil would, it. For yeah. That. Would you want somebody to do that to you? And it was the weirdest. If you were at that exit area, it was the weirdest thing ever. Because you have this crowd that's super excited in the theater, and then they're coming out and they're like whispering. And it's really quiet, and they're all trying to move so quickly. And it was so weird to have that transition because <laughs> usually people are like just so loud when they're leaving the theater. I, that's you know, how Infinity like, yeah. War was spoiled for me a little bit uh, because, uh, like, we had we had, we said the same thing for Avengers: Infinity War because you know that was also a big movie, and when uh, people. I remember, uh, you know, because we're ushers, so people don't think about us when we're in the theater. They assume, like most people, granted, assume that we've seen the movie, like, the day it comes out, which I never understand that, because I'm like, do you, you think we're special? Actually, I used to see, I used to watch all the press, the press movies, so technically, see, only I saw them before. Press screening, because sometimes there wasn't. That was only for, like, the biggest movies. That, yeah, like, but that's what's most there. important. I'm saying every movie, they're always like every, every movie without fail. There's always one person who like, as they're getting their ticket scanned, have you seen the movie yet? I had that with no, a guy the and uh, out today. the newest uh, Mission Impossible movie. There's a guy who kept trying to ask, do you, I think I was with you, Jonathan. He kept trying to ask me about the movie as he was going in. And I'm like, oh, I haven't really watched it. Oh, you're not a fan of action films? No, 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 I like action films. Oh, what, have you not seen the other Mission Impossible? No, not really. So why do, I'm like, I don't like Tom Cruise. You don't like Tom Cruise, like his acting? I'm like, I just don't like his face, okay? <laughs> I don't want to sit in a theater for two hours and stare at Tom Cruise's weird face and watch his pumpy arm run. Like, I don't want to do it. Like, I had to be like, dude, go into the theater, watch the movie you paid, like, Sixteen dollars for and leave me alone. Yeah, sound mixing speaking in of, that movie speaking, was crazy. Like every gunshot was loud. It hurt my ears. Speaking of going, kind of going back to um, Star Wars, uh, when I was th- during this last move, the Star Wars movie that got released last December, mm-hmm. I forgot what, what which one that was called. I never saw it. Um, I'm sorry to any Star Wars fans who are listening to re- this right now, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. You can pick uh, on so them. I, all right, they can be mean. <laughs> so I, um, so I was the marketing quarter coordinator then. So I was ra- uh, rounding up the 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 five hundred first, the people who would come in the stormtrooper. I remember um, I took and, pictures with them. They were really cool. Yeah, and you know what? They asked me to do some costume stuff because I was like, their costumes look cool. They're like, we uh, and I was like, I would love to do Lando. They're like, we need a Lando. And I, I never did come. I like and how then that's COVID like, happened. AKA, we need a black friend. <laughs> I mean, it's we true. have nobody to do Lando. Because AKA, no, we need a black else friend. Could do Lando, but a black person. All but right? that genuinely means they didn't have like one black friend to like of cosplay they with them. In Seattle, of course they don't. <laughs> All the minorities are right here in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also had the we also had the band that weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, who played really you know Star Wars songs and they were they were pretty good but that was like the most stressful like Thursday and Friday nights ever because I had to meet up I I had taken at least like twenty thousand steps that night because I had to walk throughout the entire Science Center 
and I was sweating and I was wearing a sweater and it was horrible. <laughs> but also, you know what else was horrible? Um, I don't think either of you were there that night, um, but I was working and it was um, Ant-Man. I remember the first Ant-Man, he was playing. Um, so this was maybe like 2015. And um, the I was washing the 3D glasses in the back in the Usher station, fittingly. And all of a sudden it started raining from the ceiling after I put one of the glasses racks in. I heard about I, this. <laughs> yes, and I was, I was very confused. I was like, did I do this? It was an Urkel moment. Did I do that? And so I ran out and uh, told one of our coworkers and I was like, I just calmly walked back and I showed her, I was like, hey, can you take a look at that? And she was like, oh, shoot. And then we called, um, you know, security and everything. He came down with the hard hat. And um, yeah, it flooded the uh, the Usher station. Yep. So the, uh, the Usher station was was in peril that, that night. Um, that, and the tiles were like coming time. down. The tiles were coming down as, as, you know, the water kept, you know, getting further and further um, into the room. There was another time uh, it had flooded back there and I was a person working and they pulled me in the back and they're like, There's, it's flooding. And I'm like, oh no. They're like, what do we do? I'm like, well, call GS and, you know, get the manager. I think it was Kaylin. And like they came and they took a look and they, I think it had been from the wash because we had just switched the glasses machine. So we just switched that and I think something got loose and it got really flooded back there. And they're like, okay, we're going to start cleaning up, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, cool, good luck with that. And they're like, what? And I'm like, oh, I'm done. My shift is over. I'm not staying for this. <laughs> I'm like, good luck, guys. Good luck to the ones who just came in. I literally just grabbed my backpack and left. I was like, nah. So you you said this is y'all's problem and then left. Oh, I did. Do you, the week I, the last week I had worked, the entire last week, every time something went wrong, I said, it's not my problem anymore. And do you remember, I want to say it was a, a, like a couple nights before my last shift. It was you and me, Jonathan, and something had happened and you had actually gotten a little bit mad and I put my hand on your shoulder and I'm like, Jonathan, I know you're upset, but I just like to say, you're like, I know it's not your problem anymore. <laughs> you got a little mad at me because I was like, ha, I'm free. <laughs> nah, I, uh, I, I, I will say I had, uh, I think the most fun ever had working that job was always just the weird shenanigans and dumb stuff we would get up to um i do remember john like this this is how bored you get when it's like two you have to wait two hours for a movie to end is that me and jonathan found out and i don't remember the name so star wars fans don't come at me all right i don't know what the name of the stupid language is but we found out that cling on. Uh, no, that's that's Star no, Trek. that's Star Trek. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> sorry. See, that's why I'm just not gonna name it. Um, but it starts is, with an A. It starts with an A. I think so. And there's a Star Wars alphabet. Hardcore Star Wars fans know what I'm talking about. And um, we had a, a standee for Rogue One when Rogue One came out that had um, it had like the characters a secret with message. Like, these blue uh, screen like glass screens on them and all yeah all the glass screens had a secret uh, had that language on them but there were secret messages hidden within them and so we literally learned the language and then took time to go write it out and I have I still have the picture saved of when we did this on the whiteboard it's called and, Orabesh yes we and we put uh, in Orabesh we wrote out a riddle <laughs> onto the onto the um whiteboard and really it wasn't a riddle what and then we wrote like in english translate this for a prize and what it said was the prize is knowledge <laughs> is that what it said i forgot yeah. what it had said and i remember just like i think it was either you know it was either indy or al you know the two nerdiest people we have at that time <laughs> who came and they were just like we hate your we don't we hate your riddle by the way <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved when nights got garbage i love when nights got so so weird there was one night i think a lot of these are just jonathan and jerome or jonathan and alex 
Correct. Because <laughs> there was a lot of point, Jerome, you started working near the laser dome and stuff, so, mm -hmm. and started doing more, so you and me started working less and less together, because my schedule was only on weekends, solely, because of my other job. There was a night, things were just weird, and, like, things just kept getting weirder, it was a weird night, everything was just weird, and finally, it's like, one in the morning we're like we finally get to go home and my weirdest point of that night happened after i left the science center actually because a little dog you see you remember jonathan yeah. a little dog in a sweater darted out in front of my car and he was like all scared and stuff so i like opened my car door and he jumped right in and he sat there and I'm like, okay, I have a tiny dog in a sweater in my car now. I have no, no idea what to do. I didn't see anybody around. So I was like, okay, I, I, I tried to text my sister. She's like, what are, you, what are you even being? I had to FaceTime her to prove that I had a dog in my car in a sweater. And you, you messaged me. You showed yeah. me the picture in the sweater. Because you, dog... you were so confused. Like, nobody was believing me. The dog looked very confused, but also, like, relaxed. Well, because I it was rain. It started to rain, and I did turn on my heated seats, oh. and like I dropped him off at a twenty-four hour vet, which you can do, which is great for anybody mm. who finds abandoned animals. Uh, twenty-four hour vets, they're the ones you can drop the pet off with. I ha I didn't get home till like three in the morning because I had to. I drove around trying to find a twenty-four hour vet. And I was just like, I just wanted to go home and sleep. This night was weird. It kept getting weirder. Like everything was off. And now I just found a tiny dog in a sweater. Like, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing anymore in my life. I, I have also an animal story. Um, this time it happened in the IMAX theater. It was close to the end of when I was working as an usher. I don't remember the movie that was playing, but um, I think it was last, last summer, probably. Um, so it was the last show of the night. And I was working with somebody else, one of the like newer people. And um, this guy came in. There was only about like I want to say like less than ten people in the theater, but there was. Oh, a so group. it was an humans show. <laughs> it was. It was not that. It was. It was. It was not that. Um, <laughs> there was a group of like five people in their like mid twenties. And one guy, he came in like I want to say like twenty minutes after the show started and whatever we let him in and he opened he said do you want to see something really cool and he opened his uh he opened his jacket i don't know if i've ever told you guys the story i think i he, remember it and i okay. have the same expression where i'm like yeah just a guy opening his jacket makes me and I, I think the the other co-worker said yeah sure um and then he opened his jacket and on sitting on his on his shirt on on his chest was a bearded dragon, um, oh, his pet bearded dragon, um, and so I I didn't touch it, but the other coworker did, um, and so she returned the bearded dragon to the man. He goes into the theater. Um, the movie is maybe like twenty minutes from ending. Did it escape? Listen, I. <laughs> I yeah, like, I remember this like, story. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump ahead. <laughs> Let me guess. It escaped. It's a dark theater. I imagine <laughs> it probably went off, and it was just like, man, I ain't even feeling this movie. Y'all ain't even feeling it. There's only five of us in here. I'm dipping. See y'all later. I'll, I'll catch y'all the concession stand. I mean, we yes. did. We did have a infestation problem at the science center yeah so maybe it was trying to catch one of the, it, the mice <laughs> the mice it's like oh like my owner doesn't feed me it's that true. only like tiny bits to be yeah. fair though i don't blame that on pacific science center because that's a whole seattle center problem literally walk around that park you will see a mouse it's a somewhere. downtown thing i mean it's a Chicago, downtown thing, right? yeah like everywhere all that you go. stuff to wrap up to wrap, wrap up that story the dude was high as beep and they ended up finding the bearded dragon. He knows I'll censor him anyway, so he yes. he's just gonna... <laughs> he came out. He came out of the theater. He's like, "Whoa, why is everybody acting so weird, dude? You just lost the bearded dragon." <laughs> you're getting like speaking of someone high. I got some serious laser dome stories for <laughs> like because these these are stories that have not uh you got neither you guys no. 
Yeah, everybody has the laser dome stories of somebody either really high or somebody trying to do something with their partner. Well, there's a dude who's super right. high at a show. And now, granted, I wasn't performing this. Rob was performing this, um, which we've had Rob on the podcast before uh, in our Twitter episode, I believe. Um, that Rob uh, was performing laser shows. He also worked with us at the Civic Science Center as well. And uh, one, and I was ushering, and uh, this guy came in just super baked but he was like you know coherent when he came in and was enjoying the music whatever he came with his two friends um like i think the two friends were like a couple and he like fell asleep halfway through the show which happens we've had that happen tons of times um but (laughs) when the show was over they were trying to wake him up and i mean he was just stiff as a board would not wake up and at first it was like hey come on man come on get up man hey 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 get up hey and it just became more and more serious the longer it took for them to wake up we were like do we need to call like the emt or something i had that and i thought i killed a man because of that and this dude was just like not getting up and then eventually it's like after they gave up and they were like oh we think something's wrong or whatever like then he was like uh what what what's going on like he was in a good state Like I, 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 dead, I, man. I use it to go to sleep because I don't have to wake up. No, that reminds me of the time I thought I killed a man doing that. Well, no, <laughs> no. Okay, so I had made it. It was a mean joke about a, a gentleman who was very overweight, and his friend was buying him all this popcorn and soda and candy. And I'm like, dear God, please don't have a heart attack in the theater. Uh, I don't want to have to deal with the ambulance. It was the last show of the night. Like I was, I was a bit mean about it. Uh, it was doing Dunkirk, all right? Uh, so the movie ends, yeah, that's a- everybody leaves the theater, and I'm like, okay, cool, the guy survived. But there was another guy who had fallen asleep in his chair. His soda was filled and his popcorn was filled. This man probably fall, fell asleep at the beginning of Dunkirk, which is- a, I was working very, with you then. Yeah, because I got we so were- scared. I was like, oh, sir, your movie's over. Please exit. He didn't respond. He didn't move. And I'm like, sir, sir, sir? And I just yell. I think I yelled for I you. Remember. And I was like, oh, my God, I think the guy's dead. I'm like, I, I made a joke about a, a patient die, or a customer dying. Now somebody's actually dead. And I freaked out. But then Jonathan was able to just come over and be like, uh, excuse me. And he's like, yeah. And he was like, uh, movie's over. He's like, oh, OK. He like dropped I think, I think you had, I think from what I remember, I think you had like almost like circled him. Because you had started like cleaning up, I think. Because you yeah. know how you would clean, pick up the things how we'd pick up the things uh i think you had started like circling his area and he wasn't because some people like to stay for the credits but the lights had come up everything his eyes were were still closed and yeah no it got i got i genuinely got scared that he died and i had made a joke about a customer dying and i was like oh my god this is on me it's like karma punishing somebody else yeah i had a i had a similar situation at the at the laser dome as like you and (laughs) jerome where it was like it was the very 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 first night of uh beyonce so it was sold out yeah it was sold out it was sold out everybody was there it was the hottest ticket of the night and this one like he, he couldn't have been more than like 22 he came out once and he's like excuse me where's the restroom and i told him where it was and i pointed to it and he said and it was outside uh and he said oh uh never mind then he went back in then he came out again he said where's the restroom again and then i pointed to where it was he went outside the doors not quite to the restroom but he's like i think i just i just need to to, to, to take a breather, get some fresh air. So we went outside for a couple minutes, came back in, show ends. Tevin, the usher, comes out saying, I was just about there's a dude that. passed out on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says, there's a dude passed out on the floor. Uh, his friends had to carry him out. He, he was awake when they, when, when 
you know, they carried him out, but, um, and he was walking, but they just had to help him out. So it was, it was not a fun night of Beyonce laser. He action probably was tripping on something else. Not weird the moral anything. of the story is yeah. don't do get drugs better in hold public. Of your, yeah. Dare to be different. But if you do do drugs, don't do it at the laser dome so much that you might just be, pa- you might pass out. All right. We don't have time. We don't get paid enough to deal with that. Okay. Yes. So. Yeah. Be nice be to warm. people like that have to deal with your bull crap. Like. Pick up your trash. We don't exactly. want to touch. There are times I touch things. I was, I, there was one time way at the beginning when I first started working, I touched something that was way thicker than water, but was clear. And I just said, it's water. And I'm going to go wash my hands. And I left everybody else to clean because I don't know what it was. And I'm like, I'm not going to. Do. So don't oh, do stuff. I definitely had to fit, like, granted, I was impressed, but also grossed out. And this is another laser dome story where three dudes came in drunk. Oh no 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 no! I gotta I gotta straight a better one than that before you even start. There was a uh, uh, a customer who peed on another customer as she was jumping over to her to go to the bathroom. Uh, but that customer <laughs> who got peed on did not leave the movie. Now I forgot what movie it was. You I was working with Q- yeah, I was working with Karen and Lauren, and it was literally halfway through the movie. This customer sat in pee of somebody else's pee. And at first you're like, oh yeah, no, maybe she just peed herself. No. Where the pee was on her and on the floor, it was clearly somebody else. And it was straight up pee. And sitting in somebody else's urine because you do not want to miss half the movie is disgusting. I I was gonna say like uh, these three dudes came into the laser room drunk one time and they were uh, and they bought some water I guess they were trying to hope to like sober up because they were gonna be chilling in the laser room whatever uh, so they bought some water from our concession stand and then you know they were they were chill they were a little rowdy during the show but I mean it's a laser show we ask people to cheer and clap and everything so it's fine um, and then uh, and because they, they weren't too loud and then you know the show was over they left and I came over and there was a bottle. But it wasn't water no more. It was just yellow liquid. At and least they had the decency to pee in the cup and not somebody but they, else. But they did not have the decency to take it black. out. They didn't have the decency to take it out. But in pitch black darkness, not a drop was found, not in that bottle. I was thoroughly impressed. <laughs> so I was like, wow. He was drunk that means, but still cognitive enough. That, that means they've done it so much that, that they're able do to do right. that. <laughs> yeah, they've done so it was, far too much. Well, the on that the, note, the moral of the story but, is the moral of the story is clean up after yourselves. Treat theater workers nice when eventually theaters open. Uh, although for, I heard some are this are this this Friday opening. But I think the um, biggest moral of all this of everything we've just talked about is just go to the bathroom before, before. a movie. You know you're going to be sitting there for two and a half hours. You know you're <laughs> going to be drinking soda, ingesting liquids. Just go to the bathroom before. So that way also after the end of the movie, you're not upset that you can't go to the like the bathroom that's pretty much empty because it's for the patient patient. I keep saying patients. I work with patients now. The <laughs> customers that are coming in. Like just go to the bathroom. Real Biggest story of everything. Before real we quick. end this, no I, real can't, quick. <laughs> I can't end this without talking about our main man who I, I do love, but man, there's some stories of Tevin. <laughs> Tevin can be his own podcast. Mostly because of like uh, those who have seen our Instagram have seen the Thor Ragnarok standee get kicked in. That was Tevin. And I want to bring up Tevin because we were talking about uh, you, Jonathan, you were talking about that night. Uh, I forget what, what you the said. Laser, the Beyonce. Yeah. No, it's- not Beyonce. This is a different night where we needed to. No, I'm thinking of it because of Thor Ragnarok. When we took that Thor Ragnarok standee, you saw the video of him go through it. What you didn't see was later that night, we had to take that standee. The reason we were destroying it is because we were taking it to the trash. Jonathan, Alex, and I were all working that night. (laughs) And me and Jonathan had the idea to go get the dollies from the loading dock. Now, we had, like, piano dollies that uh, that the maintenance used to carry things. But we were like, this standee is really long. We need to be able to carry it out, like, because we can't carry it. Yeah. It's just weird. It's tall and wide. So it'd be easier for us to just roll it out. And Tevin insists to go with us. And I was like, whatever. So me, Jonathan, and Tevin all go to go get this standee. 
And then Tevin, at some point, abracadabras his way somewhere else. And I'm like, where did he go? No, 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 no. What you're saying, no. We had the movie starting, and we had to push things away. And Tevin's like, I'll go get the dolly. So he disappeared, right. went off to laser. <laughs> then you guys were like, no, we, we need to, to get this do done. It. Yeah. So you guys got the dolly. And then later that night, we asked, did Tevin even come over there to like ask about like a dolly or a pulley or anything like that? They're like, no, he just started talking to us. I'm like, and I was so mad. He was like, like, Tevin, we needed to get this done 30 minutes ago. <laughs> before the show ended. And like, <laughs> he we had stopped he's like okay he'll take care of it. the sh- movie's ending in just a little bit you know just in case customers come down early we can explain what's going on so we let the man who technically wasn't working that night go do this and he just like halfway just Devin, um, yeah, yeah i just wanted Devin's to say that story because i tevin we love you you know this <laughs> but, it's, but he's you, his own person really. you drive us crazy but we love you for it. So uh, I, I would be remiss if we didn't do a Tales of the Usher station and not talk about Tevin at least once. Because that guy was, he was like the heart and soul of the Pacific Science Center. He was always there, no matter what. You know, if you yeah. ever needed someone to cover your shift or anything, Tevin your shift. was your guy. Tevin so, was the guy. Yeah. So we, if you, know, you needed to know something about somebody else, Tevin was the guy you asked. <laughs> be like, Tevin. Did Tell me about what happened in this situation. Like Pacific Science Center. Ask Tevin. Tevin knows. Somehow he knows. <laughs> it's because everybody talks to Tevin. It's I even told Tevin stuff that I was like, I probably shouldn't have told Tevin this. <laughs> but you know what? If it gets back to them, screw them. Now they know. Um, well, um, with, with that, that being that's said, the, that can kind of be the ending. That's why yeah. I, I wanted to bring Tevin up because I wanted that to be like Tevin like is like in case we never do tales soul, of the usher yeah. station. Yeah. Uh, is the heart and soul and he was a big connection he could be a part of all of us and yeah going off of that and like kind of ending there we are wanting yeah we are moving forward with everything of our individual creations and trying to revamp this podcast yes yeah so with that we are drum roll please I'll put the sound effect in there. Yeah, nobody okay, slam- there we go. Nobody slam a desk. Clip. Nobody slam a desk. I put it in the last one, so I have it now saved. I'll okay. It- I'll, I'll just move my microphone and make that annoying sound that you guys said I was making. <laughs> um, we are changing our name, which is exciting. Yeah. And I felt um, anticlimactic. <laughs> I guess because we're not saying it. But yeah, I, th- I think it's a good thing because... We're all no longer ushers, not because, not only because the Science Center closed down for the time being because of COVID, but because we also all have moved on with different career styles too, uh, working, you know, in a management part or like, um, God damn it, I just forgot what you do, Jonathan. Who, me? Marketing? Marketing. <laughs> yeah, I moved more to office work. Me and Jonathan moved towards that direction with marketing and stuff, and then Jerome got to be got more creative and but we also get to do our own you know different things our own ideas and stuff like creativity wise Jonathan with his acting Jerome with his like producing and stuff and I am working on my own separate podcast and doing stuff like that and I do write which uh I don't think I've ever told anybody on the podcast or said on the podcast that I, don't I do think so I don't think it's I, I, I am trying to be a writer Right now I'm writing a story that is very much out of my own genre and I'm surprised by that, but it's like good and I'm working on it. So it's nice to see that we have grown, but yeah, no Alex, longer are we ushers. Alex, you're not trying to be a writer. You are a writer. Oh God. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what, that's what all, that's always Don't what go I PBS say. on me. Listen, listen, that's what I say. Well, that's what I think. And sometimes say whenever somebody says like, "Oh, I, you want to be an actor? I want to be an actor." Well, no, that's I different. I have not published or allowed people to read what I wrote. You, however, have been in multiple plays, uh, background character commercials, and thing. You have a list. <laughs> <laughs> but I get what you're saying. Now I get what you're saying. But yeah, we're all we're all going towards our own thing at the same time. We're all still kind of connected, but we are no longer ushers, and we're no longer hiding behind a door. Yeah, we are talking exactly. smack about people straight up to their faces now. 
Look, I'm still angry at that woman with the pizza, and I will never let that go. Oh yeah, it has I been we, like. Well, we I think we, we talked about that story. Steal it, so you know we both got we both got rivals that we're yeah, trying to take down. Yours is a hamburger. <laughs> First of all, all right, fifteen dollars, fifteen dollars, <laughs> Alex. Go back, go back, we'll let that go, go back, go back. So we are revamping but, the name. We are coming up with different yeah. names and styles. Uh, we will uh, post when that um, when that's like official official for right now. Uh, we do we have settled on a name that we like so far, but we'll give you more official news on what it is and where you can find that stuff. And of course, all these episodes behind the Usher Station are going nowhere. So if you like all the behind the Usher Station's content from last year or this year, all that's still going to be around. We're going to find a way to keep that stuff around so you can still access it and watch it and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. You can you can possibly get a hint of our new name from this episode or the previous episode or any I of mean, our episodes really. Weirdly enough, we say a lot of a lot of the names we threw around, we actually say as almost like these weird catchphrases going on. Mm-hmm. Uh I I won't lie one of the suggestions was, you know, just shut up. And <laughs> I have admit I have admittedly said that to the guys at least. <laughs> I have said that to pretty much everybody. Yeah. So that was one of the things that we end up do saying some of the stuff we were like, this would be a good title because we do say it so often. Um, but yeah, what the titles we're working on do very much connect. And I think one thing that we should also tell people is that we're not going to solely focus on movies and TV anymore. We're going to move into like broader topics because we clearly cannot stay <laughs> on um, movies and TVs and stuff. <laughs> if you have listened to our last podcast, I do apologize for all that information. But you know what? For the women, be prepared. Do your research. All right. Be prepared. And if you see the name change on our social media and stuff, don't think that you just followed a random account by accident. It's us. So, yes. And yeah. yeah. So, Hopefully we'll get a little more with COVID and everything, everything went askew. And we actually didn't know what season we were in for a yeah, minute. We're, um, we're unorganized. Yeah, so... Yeah, so going this is the end of season... If you're keeping count, this is officially the end of season two. Uh, we did 14 episodes for season one, so we uh, back to 14 again, so we're at another 14 for season two. And our season three isn't technically a season three. It's season one of the new podcast. Would it be considered so. a spinoff? Uh, we had that like a reboot. The, a I reboot. Think the, yeah. I think it's the a same re- podcast you with know a what? new name. It would be fitting too if it is a reboot because our first ever episode was about reboots. And no, what? our first one was a Black Mirror. That was our second one. Yeah. First one was about <laughs> Black Mirror. That's Black right. Mirror started it all. Yeah, we're never gonna get another Black Mirror season. I don't think so. I don't think we can do like an anniversary thing. That's you know because they Black said Mirror. 2020 was too weird. Yeah, that's what I heard too. <laughs> what Black Mirror episode can ta- can like top 2020? And in- to be fair, everything they could put, like could possibly think of happened in 2020. What if a right. virus broke out? What if there were wasps that were killer wasps? What if there was an explosion in this random country? What if we had a weird president? <laughs> like it's. With this year has beaten Black Mirror to all their punchlines. Really yeah, are. they they have they can't even move forward with anything. But if we became solely, you know, uh, consistent on our like streaming networks, well, that already did happen. We yeah, became very de- dependent on them and everything. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. Well, with that being said, um, I guess for now you can follow us at <laughs> behind it's also the on our individual sh- podcast. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. Follow us. You can, for now, follow us at Behind the Usher Station on Instagram because then when we make the new name, you'll still, you'll still follow us. Um, email and you'll see us. the updates there. Yeah. Yeah. That's email true. us behind the Usher Station at gmail.com. Follow us, Usher Station Pod on Twitter. And how about you guys? Alex, uh, where can people follow you? Uh, in living my okayest life on Instagram. That's mainly where I spend most of my time. Randomly on Twitter, same name. Uh, I go on Twitter mainly when I see somebody exploding on Twitter to cancel culture. It's toxic, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Jerome? Uh, you can find me at not Jerome Rett on Instagram. Uh, be on the lookout because uh, speaking of creative ventures, I am 
doing my uh going into a creative venture of my own that will i'll start giving updates for uh for this year i've been uh, in the process of rebranding my producing my production company and, and entertainment company that i've been trying to do forever so uh be on the lookout for that as well and i only bring that up because episodes of this podcast are going to start showing up there as well um i don't know if they're going to be audio or video but, all uh, right you can find them there as well <laughs> And, and Jonathan? You find, yes, you can find me at Jonathan Keys on Twitter, Instagram, whatever your heart desires. <laughs> and with that being said, we say goodbye to season two of Behind the Usher Station and Behind the Usher Station as a whole. No, it's still the podcast. It's just the name's <laughs> changing. This ain't a serious thing. All right. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Not a serious thing. <laughs>